I'm Miss Fronte, and I teach fourth grade at Ofer. And these are my students ready for a story, and I'm going to read to anyone else who wants to listen to. My book today is called The Very Best of Friends. It's by Margaret Wilde, and the pictures are by Julie Vivas. And they're very wonderful pictures that you can see from the cover. Also, the, also, you might want to know that this book was written in Australia. It's an Australian story. Jesse and James lived on a farm with 50 cattle. There's some of them. They had 20 chickens, four horses, and three dogs. But there was only one cat, William. Can you find him in the picture? Mm -hmm. James likes cats, but Jessie didn't. Cats leave hair on the furniture, Jessie said. Cats are silly, skittish creatures. Cats not, aren't nearly as useful as dogs. Because James loved William so much, Jessie tried to love him too. She always made sure William had a tasty piece of fish and a fresh bowl of milk. She even scratched him under the chin now and again. But William knew deep in his heart that Jesse didn't love him. Not really, not like James did. William was careful not to bother Jesse too much. He tried very hard to show her that even cats can be useful. At the front gate, there was an old fridge that used for their letterbox, their mailbox. Every morning, William watched the postman put letters in the freezer, junk mail in the meat tray, telegrams in the butter box, and parcels, packages everywhere else. William meowed loudly to let Jesse know there was mail, but Jesse didn't seem to understand that he was trying to tell her. She just said crossly, stop that dreadful caterwauling. Off with you now, off. <laughs> so off William would go, off to find James. The two of them were the very best of friends. Together, they plowed the fields and mucked out the stables and dropped bales of hay for the cattle. But William always made sure he was inside the truck when Boss the Bull came near. Hmm. William was very happy inside the house. He had a basket near the fire, two shining food bowls under the kitchen table, and a flap in the kitchen door so he could come and go as he pleased cat door. In the evenings, Jessie wrote letters to her 101 pen pals, and James watched TV. William snuggled on James's lap and purred like an engine. And late at night, when Jessie and James were fast asleep, William jumped onto the bed and slept on James's feet. James said he was better than a hot water bottle any day. Then one Sunday morning, James died suddenly. Surprise, right? Sometimes stories have surprises like that. Jessie cried a lot when she thought no one was looking. William spent his days lying on the bales of hay in the truck, waiting for James to feed the cattle. Jessie became very quiet and very forgetful. She didn't write any letters, and she didn't collect the mail, even though William meowed extra loudly. She didn't keep his bowl filled with milk, and she never scratched him under the chin anymore. It was a long time since William had purred like an engine, like he used to. He tried rubbing his head against Jessie's legs, but she didn't seem to hear him or see him. Instead, she looked straight ahead and said, The house smells of cat. I think you should stay outside from now on.
She put William's two food bowls outside the kitchen door, and she bolted the cat flap closed. She put his basket next to the tractor in the shed, and she said, From now on, you can sleep in here. It's warm in the shed, and you'll soon get used to it. William didn't like sleeping in the shed. It was dark and lonely. It smelled of paint and gasoline and chicken manure. He didn't like being shut out. He meowed and yowled and scratched at the door, but Jesse didn't seem to hear him or see him. Sometimes when she opened the kitchen door, William dived into the house and crouched under the table. There he stayed until Jesse crawled after him and pulled him out and carried him back outside. So William chased the chickens and he swung on the washing and he rolled in the vegetable patch but Jesse didn't seem to hear or see him. He tried telling her that the fridge was chock-a-block full of mail but Jesse just closed the windows and drew the curtains and watched TV all day and night. After a while William stopped trying to sneak into the house. He stopped meowing and he stopped watching the postman trying to cram more and more mail into a very full fridge. Instead he just lay on the bales of hay in the track and glared at the house with its shut windows and its shut doors. Okay. And late at night, William prowled the country roads and fought with cats and hunted anything that moved. He grew mean and lean and he hated everything and everyone. He changed. doesn't look like the same cat anymore. No. One morning when Jesse put out his bowl of leftovers as usual, William hissed at her and scratched her on the hand. Ouch! cried Jesse, and she sucked her hand. She stared at William. Why did you do that? She stared harder at him. William looked mean and lean. He had a torn ear and a bald patch in his fur. He didn't look a bit like James's cat anymore. Jessie left the kitchen door wide open while she bathed her hand and put on a band-aid. And then she did three things. First, she unbolted the cat flap. Then she brought in William's two grubby food bowls and washed them and put them under the kitchen table. Last of all, she fetched the ba his basket from the shed and she put it near the fire in their house. I'm sorry I've been so mean to you, said Jessie, but I think I'm better now. Will you come into the house with me? We could get to know each other. Perhaps one day we could be the very best of friends. But William stalked off, eyes flashing, tail in the air. He crouched under the tractor and there he stayed until Jesse crawled after him and pulled him out and carried him into the house, into the house this time. So now in the mornings, William watches the postman put letters in the freezer, junk mail in the meat tray, telegrams in the butter box and parcels everywhere else. He meows loudly to let Jesse know there is mail and Jesse says he's a very useful cat and she always lets him unwrap the parcels. Then he and Jesse plow the fields and muck out the stables and drop hails, bales of hay for the cattle and both of them make sure they are inside the truck when boss the bull comes near. In the evenings, while Jessie writes letters, William snuggles beside her and purrs like an engine. He knows deep in his heart that Jessie is beginning to love him a lot. And late at night, when Jessie is fast asleep, 
William jumps onto the bed and sleeps on her feet. Jesse says he is better than bed socks any day. Hmm. It's the end.